Hi everybody, how are you doing? I hope you're fine. Uh, how is the quarantine going? Okay, staying home is fine with you. Okay, well today we're going to have another video of a global language review. Again, we're going to see a number of grammar, functions and vocabulary lessons. Uh, the first one that we have here, fill in the blanks with the appropriate phrasal verbs. So the lesson is clear, it's phrasal verbs. We have one, two, three, four, five phrasal verbs. Let's see if you remember your phrasal verbs. The first one is look up, which is to look something up. Look something up. When you are reading sometimes, reading a book or an article, etc., and you find a word that you don't understand, what do you do? You look it up. You look it up means you go to the dictionary and look for it, or you use Google uh, Translate, for example, to see the meaning of that word. So to look something up is to search for something. It can be a word in the dictionary. It can be a name in a list. It can be an address. It can be a phone number. So you look something up is to search for it somewhere in a book, etc. Log out, okay? We, we have log out and also log on okay so it's connect and disconnect okay you log on okay sometimes we also say log in so log in or log on and log out for example when we talk about google gmail uh, facebook etc all the accounts that you have you log on log in or you log out you connect or disconnect apply you apply for okay what is applying for okay inshallah after you take your baccalaureate you are going to apply for many schools okay for medicine for architecture engineering so you apply and you wait for the answer maybe they will call you so you can take the exam you sit for the exam or you will not be selected to take the exam so you apply for the school you can apply for a school you can apply for a visa if you want to go and study abroad so you apply okay and maybe you will be accepted or refused so this is called uh, applying for something and of course fill in this verb right here is the same one that we have here fill in you are going to complete the space you fill in we can fill in uh, an application form with your name with address telephone number etc let's go why don't you that job I think you have the required the needed qualifications you have the needed you have the required qualifications you have the skills so if you have the skills why don't you that job they are looking for somebody to work for them why don't you is it connect and disconnect? No. Is it fill in? No. Is it look up? You search for something? You search for it to know the meaning? No. So, why don't you apply? It's an application, okay? Why don't you apply for that job? And of course, when you will apply, either you will be accepted or rejected, turned down. You need your username, you need a username, and password, two things, username and password, two, to do what? To your Facebook page. So you have a Facebook page, a Facebook account. What do you need to connect? You need a username and password. So we need to log, log on. So you need the, your username and password to log on. And I said also sometimes we use log in. B. Give the correct form of the words in brackets. Give the correct form of the words in brackets. Okay, this is again the lesson of word formation. We are going to use prefixes and suffixes. Prefix and the suffix, okay? What comes before the word and what comes after the word. Morocco's invest in renew energies has proved to be benefit for the economy and the environment. This is a good example of sustained development. So all these words here uh, are present in our uh, curriculum, okay, in the units that we have studied, okay, here 
is invest in, okay? So Morocco's, Morocco's invest in renew energies. So the verb to invest, we have seen this previously in another video, when you have money, you invest your money, that's the noun. What is, that's the verb, sorry, you invest your money, that is the verb. Here we need a noun because Morocco's, Morocco's what? Morocco's, we need a noun here. So, Morocco's what? Morocco's invest. What's the noun of invest? Investment. Morocco's investment in renew energies. Okay? In the unit of sustainable development, we, talked, we talk about renewable energies. Renewable. We have new. Something is new. That's the adjective. It's new. And the verb to renew, you renew, it means you make it new. That's the verb, renew. Okay, so the, this is the prefix re. And now we need an adjective because we have energy. What comes before the noun, because energy or energies is a noun, what comes before is an adjective. So we need the adjective of renew, something which is renewed every time, okay? What kind of energies? We call them renew, the suffix able, renewable, okay? Renewable energies, what do we mean by renewable energies? We just mean that the energies never stop, okay? They are always renewed, like what? Like wind power, wind power, the wind, okay? There is always wind. The wind stops but comes back again. Renewable energy, like solar energy, the solar from the sun, solar energy, it's renewable. At night there is no sun, but in the morning we have the sun. So it's always renewed. So Morocco's investment, Morocco is investing money in renewable energies. And this investment has proved, it has proved to be benefits. Benefits, it's something good. Now, benefit is a noun and it's also a verb, both, but here it, it, it has proved to be. To be what? We need an adjective again. To be. Now, what is the adjective of benefit? To be. What? Be. Ne. Fi. Okay. Now, here we need to make some changes. Beneficial. We're going to use C I A L. Okay. Beneficial. Okay, so I-A-L is the suffix and C. For the economy, it is beneficial, it is good, advantageous for the economy and the environment. This is a good example of sustained development. Now, in, sustain, in, in the unit, we have a unit, okay, you know it, it's called sustainable development. Again, we need an adjective here. Because we have development, development is a noun, so an adjective from the verb to sustain. What is sustain? To sustain is to keep. We have the development and we don't want the development to stop. We want the development to keep going. So we call it sustainable development. It will never stop. Sustainable. So the verb is sustain, is to keep, okay, or maintain, sustainable. Okay, so the techniques we used here is just based on the context and you see what you need. So here, because Morocco's, we need Morocco's, we need a noun. Morocco's what? We need a noun. Morocco's investment. And then we have energies. So we need an adjective that comes before the noun. Renewable energies have proved to be, to be what? We need an adjective again to be beneficial. This is a good example. Again, we have development. It's a noun. We need another adjective sustainable. This is how we work on such uh, exercises or such lessons. Let's go to C. Fill in, again, the phrasal verb fill in. Fill in the gaps with the appropriate words from the list. We have ought to. You ought to practice sport. 
you ought to work hard. If you want to be good in English, you ought to listen to English songs and watch English movies or series. You ought to. So ought to is should. You should. The negative is you should not. You needn't. You needn't. It means it's not necessary. There is no need. Would. You would. Okay. For the conditional. Would. And can't. It. Be my little brother who wrote that. So someone wrote something and the person is saying it. Be my little brother who wrote that. He does not know a word in English. So I know my brother. My brother doesn't know any word in English. So my brother does not speak English. And this paper, something is written here. It's in English. And I know my brother. He does not know English. So it's impossible that my brother wrote this paper or this thing here. So it's impossible. It's impossible. Which model are we going to need here? Is it ought to, should not, need not, would or can't? I repeat, it be my brother who wrote that. It's impossible because my brother doesn't know a word in English. Okay? When it's something, when something is impossible, we're going to use can't. It can't be. It's impossible. It can't be my brother who wrote that. Number two, Leila, see her doctor, see her doctor, otherwise, or if she doesn't see a doctor, her headaches, she has headaches, her headaches will get worse, will get worse, worse and worse and worse. Okay? So if she doesn't see a doctor, her headaches will get worse. Worse is the opposite of better, so better and worse. So her headaches will get worse. So, Leila, is it ought to see, should not see, needn't, she doesn't need, or would? What do you think? Okay, it's ought to, because ought to is, is like she should. That's an, like an advice. So, Leila, ought to see her doctor, and if she doesn't see her doctor, otherwise, or her headaches will get worse. Let's continue. Now, D. We have put the verbs in brackets in the correct form. Put the verbs in brackets in the correct form. So we have verbs here. Verb. Verb, what is the other verb here? Another verb here and another verb here. We need to put them in the right form. So that's the lesson of tenses. We're going to see if the situation is in the past, if it's now, if it's uh, past and now, if it's the future, we're going to see. Now, but what we should bear in our mind is that, is that what, is that in every sentence there is an, an indicator, there is a sign. In every sentence, there is a sign. For example, Dear mom, I hope you are fine. I hope you're fine. I read, the verb to read, your email yesterday. So we have yesterday. So yesterday, yesterday is what? It's the future. It's now, it's the past. And the time is precise. So yesterday, I, I read in the past, okay? So in the past simple, I read, you see that the same spelling, R-E-A-D, R-E-A-D, but the pronunciation is different. This is read, I read, but in the past I read, but it's written in the same way, okay? So yesterday, I hope you're fine, I read your email yesterday. You seem, you look, you seem to be worried, you are not okay, you are worried, well, now, that's another indicator, you see, now. So now it's not the past, it's right now. Now, I stay with, with one of my friends. Now, right now, right now. What do we use when it's now? We use the present, can't you? Continuous, very good. So you say, I'm going, I'm watching, I'm listening, I'm eating. Now I am staying. I am, okay, I am staying. Okay, I'm staying with one of my friends, 
because why I not get any answer from the university yet so this is a situation of a person who applied for uh, a university or maybe he's going to take an exam okay and he is with his friends he is staying with his friends because the university not answer him yet now don't forget we have this yet here it's an indicator i not get i not get an answer from the university yet yet means that i will get i'm going to get an answer from the university but it's a question of time i not receive the answer yet remember in the other video i told you when in class the teacher tells you have you finished you say not yet it means you are going to finish but you haven't finished yet so here when there is something that we are going to do but we have not done we use the present perfect okay so i'm going to receive the email or the the answer but i have not i haven't past participle of get i haven't got very good i haven't got any answer from the university yet i haven't arrived yet have you seen this movie i haven't seen this movie yet have you finished i haven't finished yet have you taken your dinner i haven't taken my dinner yet okay i hope i hope that by the end of this month again the end of this month the end the end of the month the end of the month the end of november the end of october it's always in the future so here it's future but we don't have in the end we have by the end and we have seen this in other exercises when we have by we use the future perfect very good so by the end from now till the end of this month it's different from future simple when you say in the end of the month i'm going to do something that's in the end here it's not in the end it's by the end it's from now till the end of the month we use future perfect what do we use will hmm? i will have future perfect i will have and the past participle of move i will have moved okay past participle of course i will have moved to my own room on the campus so i repeat dear mom i hope you're fine i hope you are fine i read why i read because we have yesterday i read your email yesterday you seem to be worried well now now i am staying with one of my friends why because i haven't i haven't got any answer from the university yet i'm going to receive it but not yet and i hope that by the end of this month the end of the month i will have moved okay so when it will be the end of the month i will have moved i will have moved before the end of the month okay uh, moved uh, moved to my own room on the campus let's continue okay so here correct the underlined mistakes so in every sentence there is a mistake there is a problem and our job here our objective is to correct the mistakes we have mistakes we need to correct the mistakes now to avoid obesity obesity so to avoid it to avoid ob obesity doctors advise people so doctors give an advice to people not sitting not sitting in front of tv for long hours because you will be obese if you just keep watching tv so to avoid this problem of obesity the doctors advise people now normally when we advise someone we advise someone to do something we advise someone to normally i should have to so the doctors advise people to she advised me to my doctor my teacher advised me to to what and you know that after to the verb is 
huh? infinitive. Okay? To, so I'm not sitting, to, to sit. Now, not yet, we haven't finished. So the doctors advise people to sit in front of TV? No. We have negative here, so we need to use, okay, not to. Not to sit in front of TV. If your doctor tells you, do not eat a lot of sugar, do not eat, or I advise you, okay, you should not eat a lot of sugar. You say, my doctor advised me not to eat a lot of sugar. It's always not to. So advise someone to, if it's negative, not to sit in front of TV for long hours. Number two, plastic bags, plastic bags are no longer using, that's the problem, for shopping in Morocco. Okay, now the sentence starts here with plastic bags. Okay, now the, my question to you is, who uses, who uses plastic bags? It's the people, the people who use or who carry plastic bags. But we don't have people in the beginning of the sentence. In the beginning, we have plastic bags. So we are not starting the sentence with the agent. We are starting the sentence with the direct object because originally in the active form, we have people don't use, people do not use, okay, or no longer use plastic bags. Plastic bags, which lesson is this? Is the passive voice. When we start with the object, when you start with the direct object, this is, okay, the passive voice. So plastic bags are no longer, and you know that in the end of, of the end of passive voice, we use the past participle. I need here the past participle. What is the past participle of use? It's used, okay? So are no longer, are no longer what? Are no longer used, okay? Here, because we already have E of the verb, so we add only D for the past. So are no longer used, for shopping in Morocco. This is the passive voice. Or people, if you want the active form, people no longer use, use, active. People no longer use plastic bags for shopping. Plastic bags are no longer used. Number three, your computer wouldn't have been infected by a virus if you install a powerful anti or antivirus, okay? Your computer wouldn't have been if, if it's the condi conditional, very good. And conditional, is it two, is it one, is it three? Three, we have, in which conditional we use would have, would have and past participle, it's conditional type, type three, okay, in the past. So your computer, this is the, this, the main clause, this is the second part. So your computer wouldn't have been infected if you, if you was in conditional type three. What do we need after if? We need the past perfect, okay? And then would have and past participle. This is the rule of conditional type three. Now we already have this would have and past participle been. Now what we need is had. If you what? If you if you had and past participle for antivirus you had installed. Okay. Don't forget ED past participle. As I repeat all the time, many students forget ED. ED. If you had installed a powerful antivirus. So if you had, if you had installed an antivirus, a good antivirus, your computer wouldn't have been infected because in reality, your computer was infected because you did not install. So here when we use if, we are just imagining an unreal situation. Let's go to F, matching. We're going to match the expressions with their appropriate functions. We have opinion, agreeing, suggesting, complaining, and regret giving your opinion, agreeing, when you, are, when you agree with someone, you share the same opinion, suggesting, you give a suggestion, okay, an idea to someone, complain, what is to complain? You complain to express unhappiness, you are not happy 
with something. You are not, for example, you are in a hotel, you didn't like the service, maybe the, uh, you are traveling and the plane uh, took a long time, okay, to take off and you were waiting for a long time, so you want to express your unhappiness and finally regret. You regret doing something or not doing something. Why don't we check this website for more information? Why don't we? This is a person giving what? Giving us an, an idea. Why don't we check this website for more information? This is an idea. This is a good idea. So this is what? This is a suggestion. It's C. Okay? It's right here. Why don't we? It's C. Number two. If only, if only, if only, we use it to express what? To express a wish, okay? If only I had told my teacher about my absence before. If only I had told. So in reality, this student did not tell his teacher about his absence. He did not speak. And he is, he's doing what he's saying. If only I had told my teacher. So the student here is expressing what? Regret. That's regret. It's E. It's right here. Regret. If only I had. This is regret. Okay? Something that you regret. So, number three. For me. For me. Introducing English in primary school, which is studying English in primary school, is a good idea. This is my, my what? For me. It's my personal, my personal opi opinion. Very good. Okay, right here. So number three, it's A. And finally, I'm afraid this is not the table we ordered online. This is a, a someone, a couple maybe, or a family who ordered. So they saw they saw a table. They ordered online the table, and then when the delivery came, they ordered. They saw the table. They said, "Oh, this is not the table we ordered. This is not the table we saw." on the website so what are these people doing here they are express are they happy no they're not happy so they are expressing complaining it's uh, for d okay all right so why don't we check that's what that's a suggestion if only that's a regret e for me it's opinion and finally i'm afraid this is not the table we ordered it's complaining one more exercise, guys, and we go. Okay, G. Write, write an appropriate, okay, a, a suitable, an appropriate response to each situation. So we have a situation and we need to write the right expression. Number one, you were invited, you were invited to a party there is a party and someone invited you to this party but you did not attend you didn't come so you people invited you but you didn't go and apologize you apologize of course how can we apologize simply by saying i'm sorry for example or i'm really i'm really sorry okay now, you, you, you did not attend, so what can you say? What is the, the justification? I'm really sorry. For example, I could not, I couldn't. It was impossible for me. I could not, I could not what? I could not come. I could not attend. I could not attend. Why? For example, because I was sick or because I had some studies, because I had exams, for example. Okay, I was busy, I was tired, I was stressed. There are a lot of uh, reasons. So, apologizing, I'm really sorry. I could not attend because I had exams. Finally, number two, conversation between two people. Teacher, bullying. What is bullying? Bullying is when someone is making fun of another person, especially in school, okay, harassing the person, okay, accusing people or calling person, calling people names, they can call you some names, so it's many people suffer from this problem. So bullying is a serious problem in schools. 
Boolean, because especially when, when students don't speak, they don't speak to the teachers, they don't speak to their parents, and they suffer alone, they can have a lot of psychological problems. So please, if you have this problem, you should speak. You should not stay alone, okay? You should talk to your parents, talk to the teacher about the people who are bullying you because you will suffer in the future. Believe me. So bullying is a serious problem in schools. Expressed lack of understanding. You did not understand what the teacher said. Bullying? Express that you did not understand. What can you tell the teacher? So you say, for example, teacher, please. Teacher, please. Okay. There are many ways we can say, I don't understand what bullying is. Teacher, please. What do you mean by bullying? Teacher, please. Uh, for example, I don't see what you mean. I don't see your point. There are many ways that you can use. We're going to pick one. So, teacher, please. Okay. What do you mean by bullying? Or what does bullying mean? What does, for example, what does bullying? What does bullying mean? And the teacher is going to explain so you can understand okay thank you so much and please don't forget bullying don't let anyone bully you and if this happens you talk to parents or to to your teachers thank you so much guys we're gonna stop here see you next time bye bye